yo yo people well going welcome back to Ron's Tech Hub and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Raspberry Pi Pico 2W. So yes this is a Raspberry Pi however this is not the normal microcomputer what this is this is a microcontroller and this is a second generation so I believe the, P, uh, the CPU on this is 150 megahertz instead of the 133 from before. It is still a dual core processor. I believe there is some risk v stuff going on there as well. This is a second generation, as I've said, and this is the W. So this is the Wi-Fi enabled version. So you can connect this to Wi-Fi and to Bluetooth. This is what the Pico 2W looks like, exactly like the Raspberry Pi Pico number one. And again, this chip here, that is the Wi-Fi chip. That silver chip there is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. That's the RP2350 if memory serves, right? And the GPIOs are still along the side. So any projects that you had with the Raspberry Pi 1, the Raspberry Pi Pico 1 working, this should work exactly the same. You should be able to pull the first one out, plug this one in, and you should be good to go. I'm now going to show you guys where to download the firmware from, how to connect it to your PC, and how to update the firmware on here. The very first thing you need to do, you need to go to Google or go to your web browser, and you need to type Pi Pico 2W or Pi Pico 2 firmware. Press enter. It should be that very first website from MicroPython. Now, if you want to use a different version like CircuitPython, that will be something slightly different, but I'm only showing the MicroPython version for this. So I'm going to click on where it says Pico 2, and be sure this says Pico 2. The Pico 1 website looks exactly the same. Let me zoom in. From here, scroll down to where it says Firmware Releases. I'm going to click on this file here that has the 1.2, 4.1. When you're watching this video, it might be later than this, so the number might be different, but just go to the one that says Latest next to it. I'm going to click on that one. The downloads starts in my top right hand corner here and then I'm done. I don't need to be on this website anymore so I'm going to minimize this and from here I'm going to plug in my Raspberry Pi Pico 2. I plug the micro USB cable into the Pico first then I press and hold the button on the Pico 2. You need to press and hold the button whilst plugging in the USB cable to the laptop or the computer. So again my hand or my finger, my finger is currently pressed on the button on the Pico and I'm plugging in the USB cable to the laptop now. That was the connection sound there. So from here, I'm going to minimize this and, and do it the long way around. The next step is to open two windows. I'm going to have my downloads page on the left hand side, this side here, and I'm going to have my Raspberry Pi on the right hand side. So I'm simply in this PC at the moment. This is where you'd find all your drives, your CD drives, your hard drives, SSDs, everything would be here. Because this is in download mode or firmware mode, it shows up as a memory stick with 127 megabytes of storage. So I'm going to double click on this. And from here, all I'll need to do is to drag this file from the left hand side and drop it on the right hand side. You can also copy and paste it, but I find this dragging across like this. To drag, you click and hold your mouse, drag across, and once you're on the right hand side for me, just let go. That's gonna do its thing, and it's gonna disconnect and close everything down automatically. So there we go, everything is now closed. Now to make sure that this works, I wanna test this. The easiest way for me to test this I find is using Funny, the IDE. I'm gonna go back to my browser, I'm gonna open a new tab, and I'm gonna type T-H-O-N-N-Y for Funny. I'm gonna click on Funny here, and you see simply download the one that you want. So again, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download a Windows version. If you're on Mac, simply follow the instructions from there. If you're on Linux, follow the instructions from there. For the Windows installation, if you're not really understanding what you need to do, I would suggest simply downloading the first option, because what this does, it comes with Thunny and it comes with Python 3.10 pre-bundled as well. I'm going to be installing Python separately. I'm going to be using Python 3.13, but to be fair, there hasn't been that many changes in the version, so I would highly suggest and recommend people stick with the very first first one. Now for me, I'm going to be using the very last option because I already have Python installed. So I'm going to copy this pip install funny. I can go to my command line. So to get to command line, you simply go to your start menu, you type CMD, you click on the first one that comes up. Let me zoom in. And from here, I'm going to type in what I need. So I'm going to do pip, I think it's pip3 for me, install funny. And that should go ahead and do its thing. Fingers crossed. Yep, there we go. Everything installing. Very tiny program. It shouldn't take much time to install at all. Very good IDE though. So for anyone doing BTEC level 3 IT, anyone just doing some basic stuff, this is a very good program to start with. You could also use something like PyCharm. This is much more fully featured, much more heavy on system resources. But if you have a computer that can handle it, I would really recommend this one as the best Python IDE I've ever used. This is what you'll get when you open Thony for the very first time. I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. I don't need to change anything for me. If you need to change your language, please go in and do that. I'm going to go, let's go. And this is what the IDE window will look like. Type your text up here, you click run and it just runs. For the Raspberry Pi Pico, what you will have to do is you will have to disconnect it after you've done the firmware update 
So simply unplug the cable, plug the cable back in normally. Do not press and hold the power button. Just plug the cable back in normally. And what you do is at the bottom right corner down here where you see local Python 3, you're going to click on that and it's going to come up with these extra options. If you did not have the Raspberry Pi plugged in, this would not be down here. I'm going to click on the first one there. So that's the first one, local Python, then the first one from MicroPython. Simply click on that and that's it. The Raspberry Pi 20, the RP2350 is ready to go. So if I do something like print and I do hello, H-E-L-L-O and run that. If this works, we know everything is working fine. So that's it. The Raspberry Pi Pico has been updated. The firmware has been updated, showed you how to connect it, and this is it in use. Obviously, this is not the best use of this specific microcontroller, but I simply wanted to show you guys that everything was working fine. Uh, so I wrote my instruction up here and it showed me my output down here. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.